Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you with another version of You Asked, I Delivered. This time, I'm coming to you from inside the reefer unit. Yes, I am actually standing inside the reefer unit because I've been getting a lot of comments, and I always appreciate your comments, but these comments have been asking me about the reefer unit. Uh, various comments such as, you know, how do you set the reefer unit, uh, you know, details on temperature controls to... Uh, why reefer versus dry van versus tanker versus flatbed? Uh, you know what the reefer looks like on the inside all kinds of good questions and this time I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give you the grand tour and show you all around uh, So let me ask answer some uh, basic questions first. Why reefer instead of the other units? Well, it's, it really is all down to preference what you like to do um, you know for me Reefer, you know, was was my choice for uh, for a, a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it's easy. I mean, I cannot tell you how easy it is having you know reefer versus at least flatbed and tanker. I know dry vans uh, pretty easy as well. Uh, with reefer, it's simple. I don't do the loading. I don't do the unloading. You know, the uh, I, I back up to the dock. They do all the loading. They do all the unloading. Um, and that's if it's not a drop and hook. Uh, drop and hook is where you literally take the, the empty trailer to the facility, drop off the empty trailer, pick up an already loaded trailer, and boom, you're out of there. Um, you get to the uh, to the destination, and it may be a live unload where they're you know they have you dock and unload, but it could be another drop and hook. Again, you drop that full trailer in their yard, pick up an empty trailer, and boom, you're gone. It's nice and easy. It's zero touch. You don't have to worry about uh, touching the freight. Um, I'm never loading or unloading anything. I'm never touching a pallet, never hopping on a forklift. I don't have to do any of that stuff, which is really, really nice. It's convenient. Uh, during an, a live unload, it's simple. All I have to do is go into my, uh, into my sleeper, turn on that TV or the Xbox, kick back and relax, and they'll let me know when it's unloaded. All right. Uh, the next reason, and here's a really important reason, is flexibility when it comes to tanker you can only haul so many items you know you can haul you know you're hauling liquids that that's it uh, there's not a lot of flexibility there when you're on a flatbed you're hauling flatbed related items uh, when you're hauling dry van you can only haul dry goods when it comes to the reefer with the reefer you can haul refrigerated goods as the name implies um, you can also haul frozen goods because this uh, refrigerator unit also is a freezer. Uh, you can haul dry goods, turn the reefer off, and guess what? It's a dry van. Um, and you can also haul temperature controlled items such as chocolate. Um, I did haul uh, a load of uh, chocolate recently from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, I won't name the name of the company. I think you can figure it out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, try hauling uh, chocolate through Arizona during the summer in a dry van. Doesn't work out very well. So yeah, temperature controlled, that thing was set at, at 68 degrees, uh, plus or minus seven, which was really, really nice. Um, you know, didn't use up a whole lot of fuel uh, for the Reaper, which is great. Uh, so that's another reason. So the more flexibility you have, the more loads become available to you. Uh, and I've been really ke keeping an eye on these videos, people going through load boards and uh, you know, when it slows down like it like it had been uh, slowing down, uh, you know, the, the ones that are suffering the most are the, the dry vans. Um, there's a lot of dry vans out there, so there's a lot of competition. And there, there's just, you know, so much competition, you don't have that flexibility. I wasn't hauling a lot of, I haven't been hauling a lot of dry loads lately. I've been hauling refrigerated, frozen, and temperature control loads, it, specifically for that reason. You know, I've got that flexibility to be able to haul all of them and not just, you know, get stuck with only dry goods. So that's another reason right there. Um, that's pretty much it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the grand tour, show you all around the reefer unit, show you the, uh, the temperature controls, how to set it and all that good stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, hopefully I don't miss anything. If I do, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you have any follow-up questions, please leave them in the comments. I appreciate it. All right, now for the grand tour. All right, starting off inside the reefer. First thing you're gonna notice that's different than uh, a normal dry van 
is this thing right here. This is the chute. And uh, it's, it's a soft chute, uh, nylon fabric. Spans nearly the entire way. And what it does, literally, is it helps circulate the air from the actual reefer unit. So there's the actual reefer unit uh, that's on the other side. This is kind of the back end of it. All right, it pumps air into this chute and the air comes out these little tiny vents up here uh, a little bit, but mostly the air is transported all the way to the back here and blows out this end. Okay? As it blows out this end, it'll then hit the doors and come circling along back through these tracks here, through the tracks, through the side, between the pallets, under the pallets, and circulates all the way back in until it gets to the bottom here. Hmm. And these are the inlets where the air is sucked back in, cooled off, and recirculated. Pretty simple design, pretty neat. Uh, we do have to make sure that this unit, you know, that the uh, chute is not damaged. Um, sometimes, you know, they're loading this thing and they're not careful, they get it too high. Sometimes they will snag that chute. Uh, you can see that it's got Velcro up there so if they do snag it it will just you know unvelcro itself and you just push it right back up it's pretty easy um, if it doesn't have velcro or some of them have these uh, these rivets rivet 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 yep all you have to do uh, you know there's inside the uh, the the reefer unit itself there's a bag of these rivets and you can just go ahead and uh, pop a new rivet in there. It's actually pretty easy. Um, other little minor damage, like you can see the rivets have come out of this right here. As long as it's not sagging down, it's not a big deal. Okay, uh, so this one, no problem. There's no need for immediate repair on something like this. Uh, but when it does go into, uh, into the prime yard as an empty, they'll do a full inspection on it. They'll see this, they'll get that fixed, no problem. Okay, and then of course you've got the line. Refrigerated shippers loading above this line will prevent proper air flow. Not only that, it could damage the chute. Uh, so yeah, they don't want to load it too high or else that chute will be blocked off and it won't work. All right, and that is it. Uh, these channels, in addition to airflow, uh, they do help for when we are hauling uh, liquid loads or things that could uh, liquefy or leak or anything else. Um, they'll just you know run along the channels and right out through the outlet hole right there. And, and uh, that's it. It's also for when they get washed out. A trailer washout makes you know it's really simple with the metal floor and and you know these uh, fiberglass sides. They just come in here with a pressure washer and just you know. <laughs> all the way through each of the channels and washes right on out don't even have to worry about it all right let's go ahead and exit this thing walk up to the front all right nice convenient little steps to get in all right let's walk up to the front of the unit turn this thing on and i will show you the rest of it Enjoy the 53 foot walk. All right, let's go ahead and uh, this is the on off switch right here. Okay, it's currently off, but it will turn on in one moment. Meantime, let me go ahead and climb on up here to the catwalk. Now, keep in mind, all of this is for a carrier unit, different units may vary. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up here. Oh, look at that! Again, this is all stuff. I don't have to deal with look at that now on occasion uh, there are issues with with uh, you know anything mechanical uh, so if something does break down on the road you know and there's the battery and everything um, I can call road assist and road assist uh, can try and walk me through you know what the issue may be try and walk me through fixing whatever it may be um, and if I can get it fixed while on the road and, and keep on going, great. If not, they will send uh, somebody out to get it fixed uh, at their expense. That's with Prime. Again, your carrier may vary. 
All right, let's go ahead and get that closed. All right, there's also another little side panel here for easier access to the battery. Get that open, there you go. And of course, having these open is keeping the, uh, the unit from starting up. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get that closed so we can get it started and I can show you the various settings. Go. That's the notification that it's going to start. Ah. All right, it's nice and loud, isn't it? Yeah. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Let's see, maybe that'll help. All right, so. It is set to 33 degrees. It is currently at 49.3 degrees. And it's telling me the door is open. This is the easy part right here. The shipper tells you what the setting should be and it's printed on the bills. Okay? And this thing has an IntelliSet setting that makes it so easy to use. It, you know, anybody could do it. All right, let's go take a look here. Go to the menu, IntelliSet. these these things will warm as well as cool so if it's too cold in the in the box and it needs to warm up it will warm it up so it's kind of a heater and a refrigerator pretty convenient there that it's within the 10 degrees and it will shut itself off. All right, so the 10 degree variance, seven degree variance and five degree variance basically gives it a plus minus. So if it's set to 40 degrees with 10 degree variance, it will wait for it to warm up to about 50 degrees and then it will shut off uh, or then it will uh, turn on, I should say, and it will get it down to about 30 degrees and it'll shut off, wait for it to go up to 50, etc. So it's 10 degrees either way. Um, and then same thing with five degrees, seven degree, etc. All right, uh, dry out is for after a wash. Uh, if you do a trailer washout and uh, you do it right before your shipper, you want to run that dry out mode for a little bit. It will uh, run the air conditioning condenser uh, and uh, and literally just dry out that uh, that stuff, uh, which makes it really convenient. Uh, so people aren't slipping around or if you have a frozen load right after that you don't want all that water to freeze all right i'm gonna go ahead and shut this thing off now just push that button it shuts off piece of cake 
All right. Uh, other than that, it's pretty easy. The only other thing you have to ever have to worry about with these reefer units is this thing right here, the fuel. Okay, fuel gauge is right there. Fuel up is right there. And as you can see, it's a bit of a difference uh, in in distance here from the regular fuel cap to this one. So that I'm sure you've seen it in the fuel islands if you're already a trucker. Uh, if you pull behind a reefer unit. Well, <laughs> it might be a slightly additional delay. You know, they, they finish filling up the tractor, you know, got to hop in the truck, pull forward just a little bit, and then we stop again. Uh, so sorry for that false start, everybody, if you've experienced that. Uh, but it's a necessary evil. We did have to stop at the pump, fill up this reefer unit. Um, it is uh, you know, required of us to fill this thing up before we uh, uh, drop it off uh, you'll give it to another uh, another driver or drop it off at a shipper or anything like that so um, that way the next driver doesn't have to worry about filling it up all right hopefully you learned a little bit feel free to ask any questions if I've got the answer I will be more than happy to answer it in the meantime as always please click on my face you see it right over there click on it click on my face subscribe if you enjoyed these types of videos i really appreciate it and uh right over here should be another video uh that is also on my channel that you might be interested in please feel free to check it out as always appreciate your comments i will see y'all later have a good one